appreciate it. Good to see everyone. I'm glad you guys are here. Uh, again, I know after the game, made a comment that uh, there's no such thing as a bad win. Now, there can be ugly parts to a win, and, and we probably had a few of those during the course of the game. But uh, uh, I think overall, you did see some complimentary football uh, throughout the game. Special teams came up big in two different instances. Uh, we had the 85-yard uh, the punt return, and then, of course, the, the PAT that was blocked by uh, Spencer Wagey. But, uh, you know, Lane Tucker probably deserves a little bit of the credit there for creating a, a, a massive uh, dent in their, in their protection. But uh, uh, we had two great drives offensively, uh, both of them over eight minutes long, both of them led by a different quarterback. And so uh, that's, that's put us in a situation this week where uh, we need to continue to identify who's going to give us the best opportunity to win football games moving forward. Um, you know, in, generally, you're, you're not real excited as a head football coach to try to play two quarterbacks. You want to find a quarterback. Uh, and that's what we need to continue to do and evaluate every day, every, every session that we have at practice to make sure that we're putting our football team in the best situation possible. Uh, things we got to improve on, and, and there's always plenty of them, but uh, if you try to improve at everything, you improve at nothing. Uh, ball security, efficiency on first and second down offensively, and then, of course, uh, we need to continue to be better tackling team. I thought we had some missed tackles on the perimeter during the course of the game that uh, uh, allowed them to get some yards after contact that were unnecessary or extend some drives maybe that, that we could have defended a little bit better. But uh, the great thing about it, those are all three of those things are fundamental te technical parts of the game that we can easily fix or, or we can practice, we can rep at a high rate and, and, and continue to get better uh, with those. Um, you know, we, we, we still go back to the same thing that I told the team on, on Saturday. Football's a tough sport, played by tough people. We got to make sure that, that we're able to run the football. We got to be able to play good defense, and we need to make sure our special teams are ready to go and can flip the field and, and we can win the, the field position battle. And those are the three keys uh, ever since I've been here now, going on eight years, that uh, have been part of the recipe for success. And uh, we've talked about it numerous times. We'll continue to talk about it with our team about that. That's what our identity is, and we need to move forward with it. I'll open it up for questions. Matt, what do you, I guess, when the game starts, you'll know who your starting quarterback is going to be? I mean, what do you want to do? I anticipate on we'll know before then. But uh, uh, we don't know right now if that's what you're asking me. Uh, I, I think we need to, again, both of them had some very positive things go on during the course of the game. Uh, Zeb played well early. Uh, you know, we, we brought Cam in. He played well late and, and uh, led us to a, uh, you know, on the game winning or uh, the, the touchdown that sealed the game for us. Uh, but, you know, there was probably some things uh, timing wise. It was our intent to put Cam in when we did. Everyone on the sideline knew that was when he was going in. It just so happened that there was an interception right before it. And so I'm sure to the outside world, it looks like one plus one equals you got to change quarterbacks. Um, that, that wasn't the intent. That wasn't why we did it. We had planned on getting Cam in there at some point. Uh, we got to continue to develop him as well. On the offensive line, is, is Cody kind of staying at left tackle moving forward, do you think? I would anticipate right now. He, he's a mainstay there. He does, does a real nice job. What was the kind of emphasis or how did that happen with Cordell playing left guard? Is, is Nash all right or what was kind of the thought process going into that? Well, during the course of the game, uh, I'm going to refer to just what happened at the game and, and rather than try to speculate on, on how people are. When I get back over to the Dome, I'll have a better opportunity to visit with Mason and our training staff. But during the course of the game, both of our guards got kind of banged up at different times. Well, we needed to put someone there that had a little bit of experience. And we felt like because of what they were doing and who they were with John Ridgeway at nose, to throw a freshman in there was probably unfair. We're putting them in a situation to fail. Let's put our veteran offensive lineman in at guard. We can get a big body on a big body. And if you go back and watch the last series, it probably had something to do with the ability to run the football late in the game. Um, and and let's, let's bring in a guy like Jake Rock who has a ton of practice reps at right tackle. Let's bring in a young guy like, um, oh, young man from Pier, name's Gray, Gray Zabel, um, sorry. Um, and, and give us a little bit more veteran leadership in the middle than just bringing a bunch of young guys in. Back to the quarterback position, kind of how do you approach that decision making? How do you, what, what kind of factors are you looking toward for and who's going to start on Saturday? Well, the first thing I'm going to look for is who's the best leader. 
and who comes to practice ready to go today. If someone comes to practice and is pouting and frustrated or irritated because maybe they're not running with the ones at practice, well, then it answers itself. Whoever's going to give us the greatest leadership, the best leadership moving forward. For you to kind of iron that out sooner rather than later? Or you well, just kinda... we'll have conversations today already. Just make sure both quarterbacks are on the same page and know what the expectations are. The offense was a little more had more variety to it with Cam in there, with his ability to move around a little bit? He, he does provide some things uh, with his feet, uh, you know, and he, he's a smart football player. And you guys have heard me talking about him since the day he arrived last June. I, I'm super excited about him. Uh, and I know that the, there's a high, high ceiling for him, but uh, you're exactly right. His, his willingness to take off and run, and uh, he took some shots on Saturday. Uh, but we, some of the quarterback run game uh, becomes a bigger threat or a bigger part of our offense. Not that Zeb can't do it. Uh, it just becomes a bigger part. Typical one of those coaches' kid kind of things again? He is exactly uh, what you would hope to find in a coach's kid. Uh, super mature, uh, detail-oriented. He's, he's in watching film uh, all the time. Uh, due to the fact that, that we're in spring break right now, I, I don't know if he's left the dome. Uh, he was there at 7.30 in the morning and has probably watched every single game twice by now. A ton of veteran experience that has a lot of you know, uh, a lot emotionally at least invested into the NDSU-UND rivalry side of it. How much of this week is on a, a guy like, um, uh, you know, Jackson Hankey or Cordell Volson, North Dakota natives? How much is it on them to kind of express to their teammates how much this matters? Well, you know, it's funny you bring that up. We're, we're, we're probably, I'm in my meeting today with the team, I'm, I'm going to talk about the game. Uh, I'm going to give them the, mat, the, the facts of, you know, 1894 was the first time the two schools played. Um, there used to be a trophy for it. Um, but otherwise, it's the, the biggest game of the week because it's the only game. And so that's how we're going to approach it. Uh, I don't think we're going to do anything different or, you know, all of a sudden we have to, you know, try to shake the rafters of the Fargo Dome on Monday to get our kids excited. We, we need to get better. Uh, I'm not here to win cheerleading contests. It's all to look at uh, UND yet. Uh, of course, you... I have. <laughs> some things you're seeing from that. Type. I, they're really good, and I think that uh, high ranking. I know some people have them picked first in the country. They probably have earned it. Uh, it improved play up front on the offensive line. Uh, they got a you know uh, Otis Way running back is, is is back. Missed last year. Uh, tremendous downhill runner uh, can make you can make you miss as well. They have solid receiving core. Um, good tight ends from the offensive side. Defensively, not real big, uh, but Coach Halenka does enough things from a defensive standpoint, bringing pressure, playing single high, playing uh, too high safety, uh, that he's always trying to change the picture on your quarterback late. They create a lot of TFLs. They get you behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, it's going to be a challenge for us. They're, they're a really good football team, and uh, right now on paper, they're better than we are. Schuster. Um, they, 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 they protect him. Uh, they don't. You, you watch film, and I'm sure you guys all have very little drop back pass. It's all moving pocket, nakeds, uh, screen game. Uh, they're trying to get the ball, three step, trying to get the ball out of his hands, uh, you know, and, and keep the chains moving. There's nothing wrong with being second and five. Uh, I think, you know, Coach Schweiger does a good job of, of making sure they understand it's okay to punt as long as we continue to, to win the field position game. And they've done a really good job on special teams. I mean, that was why they beat South Dakota State. You know, two huge plays on special teams. What you mentioned the you know offensive line um, maybe being a little bit better than it was maybe in twenty. What's the, what's the difference between the the, t the UND team you saw in twenty nineteen that came here and the one you see on film now? Well, on their two deep, they got fourteen seniors right now. I think that's part of it. Uh, you know, we we would love. I mean, everyone loves to have veteran leadership on their football team. I think just continuity in the program. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, Coach Freund's done a really good job. He's been the offensive coordinator for two years. I'm sure there's a level of uh, consistency and a level of comfort that those players now have in his system. And, you know, I, I know, Mike, this is, is crazy, but I'm sure these kids are playing really confident right now because they beat some really good football teams. In the moving pocket, you mentioned the short passing game. What do you guys have to do well defensively to combat that? 
Well, I think we got to, we, one, we have to do a great job of having some cover downs. Uh, they're not really an RPO team. They're more of just an option team. Uh, they'll, they'll get you in three by one slot triples. If they don't, if they like the numbers, they like the count out there, they're going to throw smoke. They're going to throw bubble. Well, if we can take that away and force them to become one dimensional, hey, we got to go with the run game. Uh, I, I think. That, that'll do us good. Uh, I, I think we're solid up front on the defensive line. Uh, I don't know if we're as – I mean, they're physical. Uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, we're not real big. We're not real veteran-like, but we, we have some talented young kids that can play for us. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. This is a big week for James and Jasir. Oh, it's going to be re- – always, every week is big, yes. But you talk about a big back. Otis, he runs hard, and we're going to have to be ready to tackle. we gotta be ta- we got to tackle better than we did a week ago. Biggest difference from 2019 when you saw them defensively that they have a running back that can juke and jive like that? Well, I think that that, that helps, but I'm going to go. They're a line of scrimmage football team as well, and they are much improved up front. And, you know, over the course of the last, you know, 12, 13, 14 months, they've, they've, they've improved up front. And uh, their, their players have continued to get better, like every program hopes that they or wants their kids to do. The way Cam threw the ball on Saturday, uh, I was. Uh, I mean, the, the first throw he had, that back shoulder throw over on the sideline. Uh, there's not a lot of quarterbacks out there that feel comfortable throwing it. It was an outstanding catch by Christian at the at the same uh, point. Uh, there was one throw during the course of the game that I, I wasn't sure where he was going with the football, but it was completed to Christian across the middle there. It was a, a little bit of a jump pass. Uh, uh, I think he'd be the first one to admit he forced it in there a little bit, but uh, he did a nice job. Uh, we, we, you know, I mean, during the course of the game, there was two opportunities. It, it would have been different. You know, that first interception, Christian's 15 yards behind the defensive back. If, if we just pick up four-man rush, uh, you know, it, it's a different story. And, but that's why you play the games. Are you confident in Cam's ability to read what he needs to read and make the right calls to line scrimmage and all that stuff with a yeah, young I guy, am. true freshman? No, I, I am. I think we, there's times we have to maybe, uh, maybe we take off some of the trade shift motion things so that way he can see the picture as it is. Because you know if you jet a guy across or you motion people, well, that can change the structure of the defense. And all of a sudden now what I thought I saw is different. Oh, now the play clock's winding down. Now all of a sudden, now anxiety, I'm not as comfortable anymore. Well, let's let them see a picture and make the right decision. Abstract question, but how, how much different do you think that Cam Miller's experience is now in the spring than it might have been in the fall? Oh, in the fall would have been minimal. You know, I mean, in the fall, we, we'd, we'd had Trey Lance. And, yeah, so it would have been, I mean, he, he'd have played in like two games like Trey did a couple years ago. So... Yeah, when you have a guy as good as Trey. Uh, his development, if you didn't have Trey, and in his development, um, how much has those extra four months helped? Well, it, it, a ton. I mean, double rep, he, he's getting, I mean, with us only having four quarterbacks right now, he's getting half the reps at practice every day, every day during our preparation. Did Garrett become a, a difference maker? Well, I think. Two years ago, in 2018, he was – I want to say he was an all-conference punter, wasn't he, Ryan? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I think last year the added duties of being the kickoff guy uh, took a little bit away from his leg. Uh, his leg got heavy during the season. Uh, but he was the next best one, and we needed him to do that with the injury to um, Ryan. But uh, he's always had a tremendous leg. He's confident. Uh, he's worked extremely hard. Uh, and, and we've, and I think we've tried to do a good job of controlling his reps, uh, kind of like a pitcher, uh, making sure we don't overuse his leg, we don't overkick him during the week, so he can be fresh and ready to go. Help this week? Don't know yet. Uh, banged up, quad injury. Uh, need to sit down and talk to Mason more. But uh, if he's out, we'll probably ask Ryan, probably ask Garrett to do some of the kickoff duties. Uh, we also have a freshman by the name of Caden. A uh, young man who's here from Oregon who uh, does a nice job as well. Nash Jensen's status at all? Anticipate he's going to be ready to practice and ready to go. You know about Cam's hometown of I in Solon, Iowa. What what kind of football played out of there? Good football. Uh, it's a if there's such a thing as a suburb of Iowa City, uh, I would say it is. Um, it, a lot of people who work in Iowa City live in Solon. Nice, great little town. Um, 
you know, I'd be remiss not to say they were really good at football since Kevin Miller, his dad, was the head coach for years. Uh, I got to know Kevin Miller probably back in 2001. Uh, he used to bring Solon High School up to Winona State for team camp, uh, and that's where my relationship started with him and had maintained it throughout. Uh, real good, real solid 3A football. They got kids all over the country playing college football, uh, tough, hard-nosed kids. Uh, what you'd expect from, you know, Middle America, blue collar America. Did he baseball if he wanted to go down that road? Yeah, he had, uh, I know he had some Division I uh, offers to pitch. I mean, you look at his accolades, he was all state as a sophomore and a junior and didn't even play as a senior because Iowa baseball doesn't start till June. Um, I, I'm sure he would have had some other opportunities out there, but football, easy, easy to understand why, uh, why he gravitated towards it. Yeah, Cam's had the success he's had so early. I think part of it is is some of the things that Dom was alluding to, uh, you know, having he, he's been in a coach's office his whole life. He sat with dad watching film. He goes home at the dinner table. They're probably talking football. He's in the car with dad after practice. They're still talking football. The, the kid just has information, and he's gathered that over the course of time. But he's also made himself into what he is as well. He watches a lot of film. He asks a lot of questions. He's up in coach. Uh, Hedberg's office routinely. He's around the facility. Um, and the thing that you see now is his development is understanding what the other 10 guys on the field are doing, having a better grasp of protections, having a better grasp of what the receivers are doing, or how, how can I adjust them based on what coverage, what structure of the back end I'm seeing. The offense different different when he's out, out there. It can. It can as long as we're successful. we still got to block guys up front. Uh, our success will always be uh, determined on the success of our offensive line. The plan was to bring Cam in for that series no matter what happened. It just yeah, happened. So what was the plan then to go back to Jeff? Well, I think we're going to kind of see how it went at that time. Uh, we told Cam that it was going to be the third or fourth series in the second half. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, started to move the football, had some success. Uh, and, and we let him do his thing. I mean, eight, almost an eight-and-a-half-minute drive was 12, 14 plays, um, you know, not many freshmen at NDSU have, have had that success. But the other piece that I need to make sure that I'm, I'm giving credit where credit is due is the other 10 guys strained to finish there too. They knew they had a freshman quarterback in there, and so maybe I needed to hold my block a little bit longer. Maybe I needed to run a little bit harder. Um, and so it, it still was a, a team event. It was a, the offense did. It wasn't just Cam out there. Uh, they all had a piece in it. That was the reaction when you stuck with Cam the rest of the way. He was on the sideline next to me, talking to me about the game plan, talking to me about the pressure. Uh, he was he was uh, intentional about his feedback. He continued to work with the offense, uh, meet with Cam in between series. So did what I expect the captain to do, and that's to be a great leader uh, and to continue to help this football team win. On a number of occasions, this spring being a race to maturity, where do you feel like you're you're at there? We're in the middle of it, and we're – sprinting as hard as we can right now. I mean, you, you look at that, I mean, the, the the last drive of the game, the touchdown drive, what was there, five freshmen on the field at times? We're sprinting. That's all right, though. I'd rather sprint than be walking around. You know, tell the guys all the time, this is no walk-around party here. You know, we got to be moving. Coach, we do have some questions online. Let's go to Eric Peterson, please. Coach, would you rather have one guy play the majority of the snaps on Saturday at quarterback, or do you think it could be a platoon situation? How would you handle that as, well, as you I get to that? It, my preference, Eric, would be to have a guy. Um, I, I haven't been around many teams that have, have had two platooned uh, or had multiple quarterbacks play. It's funny you ask that question. Uh, our most recent hire, uh, Coach Joe Bashorner, who was the offensive coordinator at Mankato State, they had – two quarterbacks that played equal time that took them to the national championship game. So, you know, we do have a coach on staff who is a little bit familiar with doing that. Um, I'm not saying that's what we want to do or that's what we want to become. But, again, the, the spring is unique in so many ways. So uh, why not add another? Can you describe the role of Spencer Wage you might play in a game like this, especially with the way UND has run the football to this point of the season? Well, we're going to have to utilize him to his strengths. Uh, and if we can – uh, utilize him kind of all over the field. If he needs to play interior, we, uh, he has the ability to do that. Uh, he's a dynamic pass rusher. Um, you, you guys see he's making plays. He's doing a lot of stuff for us. Uh, you know, he's, he's become a, a leader of that room. Uh, 
And, and I think he can, he can have an impact on this because I think he is a, a, a really, really good football player. And just finally, I mean, you've described this before, but wh- where do you think his biggest jump is, at, you know, adding the weight and just keeping the mobility? What, what do you think he's improved on the most from the last time you saw him on the field before well, this? I think, it's his I, I think it's his strength. Um, you know, those 20 pounds that Kramer helped put on uh, were all muscle. Uh, and as you mentioned, he's been able to keep maintain his mobility, maintain his ability to bend. Uh, and I just, you know, it, it's funny how when you're healthy, you play a little bit more confident, and he's healthy right now, and he feels good. Uh, and, uh, you know, he still has that twitchiness, that, that, that explosiveness that uh, you don't see a lot of 280-pounders have. Hey, Eric, I got a question for you. Sure. What's going on with the haircut? Uh, you want to see what's going on I, with the haircut? I've seen it plenty. Uh, it, not much of a haircut's what's going on, but I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm kind of letting it flow here a little bit, so we'll see what happens. Okay. Appreciate it. We do have another question online. Let's go to the Associated Press. I don't know if I can follow that. Ryan, I appreciate the opportunity, and Matt, thanks for the time. I'm, I'm with the AP down here in Dallas, Matt. I'm working on a story about the draft and the FCS season, and you know better than anybody the impact uh, that this unique timing has on an FCS roster, and I just – First of all, I kind of wondered your take on this sort of unique situation. Well, it's it, unique is is probably uh, downplaying it. Uh, it's it's been uh, extremely uh, tiresome and, and and worrisome at times, uh, and and especially our 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 situation is extremely unique. Uh, we have played a lot of football games here at NDSU. We've been fortunate enough to play a lot, and when the fall was was when the fall was canceled, and there was a, an eight game schedule proposed for the spring. Uh, there was probably 10 to 12 of our seniors who had to make a decision. Uh, I'd made the comment, I'd made the comment to our local media here and others, you know, life didn't stop when football did. And a lot of those guys had jobs that were scheduled to start in December, to start in January, after the end of their, or gra- at the end of graduation, at the end of their college career. And they had to make some tough decisions, come back and play for what at the time, I'm, I'll be honest, I don't think a lot of our guys had a lot of, faith that there was going to be a spring season. Uh, there had never been one before, so how was I going to put all my eggs in one basket to something that had never existed? And uh, it, it created some holes in our, uh, in our team in certain positions. Uh, it wiped out uh, our two deep in, in some areas. Uh, I, I've, you know, we went into the fall having seven senior offensive linemen. We have two right now. And, you know, just – and, and those guys did what was best for them, and, and, and I'm good with that. And, and we're doing what's best for our program right now and trying to continue to develop our young guys. Uh, we'll reap the benefits of this. Uh, it just may not be today or tomorrow or next week or two weeks from now, uh, but they're all going to grow up and they're going to mature, and these reps are going to be invaluable. There are a handful of guys who are still playing and, and have decent draft prospects. I wondered what she thought about – whether the spring season, kind of this being sort of the only game in town, might help some of those guys maybe get drafted in the late rounds or maybe sign as an undrafted free agent when they might not have otherwise. Well, that was uh, – we, we had a, a, that conversation with a couple of our own players right now uh, trying to identify what was going to be their best outcome. Is it – you know, they wanted to play in, in, a, in a year that doesn't count towards your eligibility. Do I come back and – I advise them to come back and get as much film as you can. Uh, I, I think there's, you know, when you can, when your resume is long and has a lot of quality to it, I think it's tough for the NFL guys to ignore it. And, uh, you know, so we had a few guys that, that considered playing and then being available for the draft. But at this time, we don't have any. I know Illinois State, I think their, their offensive tackle, uh, Himmelman, uh, has done that. The young man we played this week. And, you know, I don't know if it's helping him or – or hurting him, I, I'm afraid that you're getting lost kind of in the in the shuffle. Uh, everyone's, you know, from an NFL standpoint, is spending their time watching other prospects. I don't know if they're watching FCS guys, but I could be totally wrong. I know this is down the road, and, and you don't want to talk playoffs at all, but uh, you guys are mainstays late in the playoffs. The playoffs will be going on when the draft happens, kind of like the College World Series. I just wondered what you thought about how weird that would be. Well, it, it only becomes weird when you actually sit down and start thinking about how all these things kind of fall in together. Um, 
you know, we're, we're going to be playing football and Major League Baseball is going to have their first game. I mean, there, there's a lot of unique things going on right now. Uh, you know, I, I know this, that, that regarding the draft, I'm super excited for Trey, uh, Dylan, uh, Jabril, three of our former players that uh, uh, have high draft standings. And I, I hope they find a place and, and, and land in a location or an organization that they can uh, flourish in.